Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. Aviation Minister Festus Kiamo has introduced the voluntary special airport marshals to conduct unscheduled visits to improve airport hygiene and professionalism. Marshals, including media and NGO representatives, will monitor staff conduct and report findings directly to the minister. KMO alongside officials and legislators will also carry out unannounced inspections to ensure accountability. This initiative adds transparency and ensures funds for airport maintenance are utilized effectively, aligning operations with passengers' expectations. Now, joining us to discuss this is Olumide Onghaya as a General Secretary, Aviation Safety Roundtable Initiative. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Good morning. So we're having introduction of airport marshals, obviously, to um, just ensure that conduct is being, misconduct rather, is being curbed. But I want to get your take on this, the fact that this is being introduced right now and how you think it would just um, change or maybe better the experience, the passenger experience when it comes to the aviation system in Nigeria. Thank you, uh, uh, well, Thank you for having me, and uh, once again, good morning. Good morning. Um, we wanted to introduce yesterday the first letter. Are we going back to the days of the war, war against indiscipline? Is that what we are going back to for them? Um, he is the honorable minister of aviation. Maybe he has this information cut out for him to uh, to take this approach. Uh, it's it's uh, there's nothing to hide about the airports where we the, the, the infrastructure and the, and, uh, and the services. Uh, Presently, I'm not a part of West that, that that is no secret. Uh, that has also contributed so much to the aircraft and uh, flex delay, yes. passengers' discomfort, and uh, the 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 the, the, the each cost that is how to improve the airport uh, services and operation. And these airports are owned by the government. But what what I what I, uh, I try to understand or I want to understand here yeah, is that the minister for coming to coming to office they removed every management staff. Everybody didn't leave on this and appointed so team. And I think by that by that by that by that appointment you have given people responsibilities. And uh, you're supposed to monitor the, the, the those people the, uh, have confidence those who are appointed. Now with this special, now um, we are giving them the 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 by the owners of the airport, which is the government, and mm. that's what should be empowered. And um, we cannot continue. Yes, as of today, points are not detected in the revenue earners for the federal government, but that does not transcend to the type of services rendered to the passengers and also to the airlines who are their clients. And that's why we need to start a river for the federal airport of Nigeria, and that that can be done if the government. Is ready to take uh, take the ball by the ball. Mm. All right, so with this, um, the introduction of the airport marshals, now, I want to, because I'm always going to come from a cost perspective. Of course, if they are going to um, bring these people on board, they have to be paid, obviously. So don't you think there's going to be the cost implication for this? And is this the best way to go? Isn't, it, is, is, isn't there a situation whereby they just need to ensure that they are hiring the right kind of people with the right kind of attitude and ensuring that this misconduct doesn't even happen in the first place? than having to bring marshals who are going, going to just pause there and um, write down their findings and go back to him as the minister? Well, uh, um, the, 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 the marshals are going to be personalized. The marshals are just assumed to be normal passengers who are our users of the airports. And, uh, and the, 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 maybe that's why he wants a, a report from uh, another set of people from the professionals he has appointed over the, the, the last year, December. So I think um, it, it, there's a need for him to start synergizing. He, uh, he must take up, he must take up the responsibility because all appointments were made by him. All, all the former management staff of that airport were removed and the process of being paid, the directorates were expanded uh, from the six that were approved by the, by, by the, by 
by the Secretary of Government's uh, documentation, they were to, to exploded by the former ministers of about nine, or uh, when it was about living, that was Hadi Sonika. And when he came in, he has expanded those directives to about 12. But bringing more cost of operation to the FI for services, putting more pressure on the uh, ma 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 management. So um, they, they, they have a responsibility to ensure that this airport, we, we have these this, this airports as such as steady and they are, uh, and they are profitable and operate uh, within the ambit of the aviation uh, uh, confines. But then, uh, in, in doing that, the, 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 the government need to look at uh, the options before they. They are looking at concession. There are others. also the, uh, the possibility of, of, of keeping that airport as a, uh, as a government owned entity, but money by a portable airport management. And that can make a fact itself. It's going to be playing. So I, I think the officers are before then, we are waiting for them to roll out their book. But they really said it's looking at concession. We will be meeting the stakeholders very soon. And uh, maybe from there, we will not see what direction the government wants to take concerning the airport. But see, the, the martial team. It's just a stop gap thing, it cannot be a permanent feature. So, the, the best uh, approach is to see how you can take government the, the, the appointments, management of funds from the federal government to a capital management company so that funds can be able to compete with other, other uh, uh, airport organizations and also invest in the neighboring, uh, in neighboring countries, uh, uh, particularly the air, air, airport uh, purchase and management. For now, uh, that fund does, does, does not have that strength. Not because they don't have the professionals. But what is key, you know, what, what is really holding that aggression down is the interference and the, 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 the political interference and the appointments and management coming from the government directly. And we have a good history here in NN2 that's just in Lagos here. Yeah. So it shows that Nigerians can manage airport if given the freedom, if, 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 if they have uh, the, the wherewithal and uh, to, to, be, to be free enough to, 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 run, to run an organization. But that's not the case in fact now. And, uh, we have seen that now with New York already. Uh, Set of Montreal has come in into his previous mm -hmm. project like this to support and manage, manage the parents from the federal government. So one of the um, issues and that I can probably call as gross misconduct is flight delays. And I'm sure um, for most passengers, that is a major, issues for, a major issue for them because you're probably set to go do something, you want to fly, and then they tell you that your flight is being delayed or even being cancelled. And most times there is no compensation being given for that. For instance, um, you know, in the United Kingdom, there was one time I was coming back from from uni, I was coming to Nigeria, and my flight was being delayed, and I was given a hotel, but that doesn't even happen here in Nigeria. They would put you on the next flight, they would probably cons compensate you, give you a hotel and um, accommodation and feeding, but in Nigeria, it's almost like they tell you your flight has been canceled or your flight has been delayed and go sort yourself out. Now, that is one of the major issues here. Aside the fact that, of course, there's corruption, even with immigration, people have to, they're even begging. You're, you're seeing a passenger, you're begging. So there's a lot of web um, that, of, of things that are just happening when it comes to our airports and you know, the aviation sector as a whole. But from your own angle, how do you think we can start to mitigate or tackle most of these issues that are happening with the airports? And what's the way forward going from here? Before going to, going to into that question, let me just uh, don't, uh, forget to mention this. I, I have absolute confidence in the present MD of the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria. If she's given that uh, freedom uh, to manage and run the organization without uh, the appointees and other interferences outside, outside the agency, I, I, I think she's a very competent woman and she has shown uh, that ability to manage that, uh, manage that organization. If, uh, uh, despite all the uh, problems that are that's uh, that uh, uh, of problems that's in met of ground and that uh, she will be able to run it. Now coming to the issue of compensation that's to your choice, I can tell you that all all your people are in act are in the regulations to be uh, to be able to be implemented. But you see rules and laws don't work you know it's institutions that manage them. The ultimate will be the ultimate will be strengthening the institutions and also the positive response, uh, response like the, the, the later process of still. Now, I don't even see uh, this, uh, those things you have highlighted, this conclusion. Yeah, 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 the books, they're, they're not, they're not getting into us, they, they're in a, they're, they're in a regulations. But then, the passengers should have to initiate that process of complaint. Because when you, when passengers, when this happen, 
and person just don't do that, just take it to jail, just go on social media or go back to their houses. It doesn't have to say, you just, uh, you cannot really prosecute or process uh, for them on social media. There must be a formal application and notification to the regulator and to the airline. And that process will start. And once we start that process, once, once the airline begins to see that the, uh, the passengers are pushing, the regulators are also not going to okay. do the very bad process. Then sir. everybody is pushed. Mr. Olumide, do we have to get to that point yes, where I need to write a formal letter or make a formal complaint? Shouldn't it be something that they should think about? Like, oh, because we know that we've delayed or canceled this person's flight, we definitely need to compensate them. Do I have to write a formal complaint to that? Because you've already said there are provisions of the, for this, there are regulations, but it's not just being implemented. How can we ensure that it is implemented in the next 30 seconds because we have to wrap it up? Yeah, if, 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 if this is Nigeria, and in Nigeria, we all stay the way, we're ready to go behind that thing. So, once the, somebody initiates that process, I think everybody will stop. And let me tell you, uh, the NCA, it has a regulation now, have just lost this consumer protection portal, they are, which is going to address all the issues you have raised. Now, this portal has, has uh, alerted uh, travelers, passengers alike, that this is the, this is the, uh, the way to go about it, and we are ready to take take a uh, provider uh, consumer protection very seriously and that's and I, let, let's, I, I want us to hope I have this positive uh, view that this new portal uh, that new portal has just been launched and the road show from the uh, consumer protection department of regulator will help to begin to address this. The, right. uh, yes, I must agree with you that it, it has always been a problem but then it's time to work on it has started and I think it, it's going to work. All right. Thank you so much. Um, it's been a pleasure having you on our show and just discussing this. And we just hope that, you know, the aviation sector, in fact, every sector in Nigeria will start to work better. Thank you so much for coming, Mr. Olumide. Thank you for having me. All right, so we've just been speaking with Mr. Olumide, and we've been talking about um, the aviation minister, Festus Kayamo, who has obviously said there's going to be airport marshals um, who are going to curb misconduct in the aviation sector. And our guest was Olumide Ohio, who's the General Secretary, Aviation Safety Roundtable Initiative. This is where we have to wrap it up on the show today. Thank you so much for having the breakfast with me. My name is Rume Paulson. I'll see you again on Monday. Have an amazing weekend. Good morning.